So, um, I read Josh Hawley's talk from the National Conservative Movement. It's an interesting talk. I mean, much of it I agree with. Uh, he's very, every time he attacks the left, I agree. Uh, much of his talk was about manhood, what it means. Well, he never really said what it means to be a man. Uh, he talked about uh, manly virtues, yeah, which, which are virtues, uh, and, and I, I do think they're associated with masculinity. Uh, but he ba mainly spent the time, as usual, as, as what these people do, attacking the left's view and the attempts of the left to uh, bring down manhood, if you will, and, and masculinity and the virtues of masculinity. Um, and in that context, of course, he went after uh, capitalism, uh, the market economy. This is quoting from him. In this country, we are more than mere consumers. We have been the makers of great and mighty things, and we shall be again. So we're not anymore. We don't make great and mighty things anymore. We don't make, I don't know, uh, uh, iPhones. I guess they're made in China, technically. It's very, very Marxist materialist perspective. We don't make stuff anymore. I wonder how we consume so much. It's really a, a, a really a, an interesting question, how come we can consume so much if we don't make anything? I, I, I never understood how people think that works. I don't think Hawley does this for votes. I don't think Hawley is about the votes. I think Hawley is an ideologue, or at least has become a consistent ideologue. He has figured out, certainly, uh, when he ran for president, and now for president, when he ran for the Senate, he was already this. He was already arguing against individualism, railing against classical liberalism, no, the thing about Josh Hawley that you have to respect and the thing about Josh Hawley that, you, that should make you really scared of Josh Hawley is that he isn't just doing it for the votes, right? Uh, Marco Rubio is. Marco Rubio will just say whatever he thinks will get him elected. Ted Cruz is. Although we'll see, Ted Cruz is challenged. But Josh Hawley is a true believer. He is super religious. He's super collectivist. He is dedicated to this conservative nationalism. He was dedicated to Trump. And, and he is the natural heir as an intellectual to Trumpism. He will make it much more consistent. So uh, Josh Hawley is truly scary. And uh, I fear uh, there's a good chance he becomes president one day. And I, I think he's, he's the kind of guy who could, who could really do a lot of damage to this country, deep, deep damage that will be very hard for this country to recover for, from. Yeah, Hawley's different from Pence. He's much worse than Pence, much worse than Pence. He continues, he says, the DC experts will say it's impossible. Better to outsource our production to China or Mexico or other places where labor is cheap. But free labor and slave labor should never be put to an even plane. Wait a minute, Mexico labor is slave labor? Does he really know what slave labor is? We could argue about some labor in China, but Mexico, slave labor, really? No, much worse than Biden, much, 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 much worse than Biden. Biden will not do lasting damage in the way that a Josh Hawley could do lasting damage, or in the way Trump did lasting damage to this country. He quotes Teddy Roosevelt as saying, I'm for business, but I am for manhood first, and business is an adjunct to manhood. What does that mean? We must make every effort to restore a vibrant manufacturing sector in this country that can employ working men at living wages, wages that can feed a family and support a community. And we can start by requiring that at least half of all goods and supplies critical to our national security be made in the United States. What is critical to our national security? Uh, the Trump administration tried to claim that building cars was critical to our national security. If that's true, everything is critical to our national security.
This is, I don't, I don't understand. I, I really don't understand this. So maybe you guys can enlighten me. Maybe somebody in the super chat can enlighten me. Don't you see that this is worse than Biden? Because this is from the, the, the right. That if this is what the right stands for, then there is no opposition to statism. And that makes it a million times worse. That Biden is just what the left has always been. But the right used to be about at least a semblance, lip service to freedom, to, to markets. At least they gave it lip service. Now they don't. Now they're just as statist as the left, or almost as statist of the left. I think they're more statist than the left. And I think that their, their statism is more powerful than the left. And you don't get that that is worse than the Biden form of statism, which is just run-of-the-mill leftism. It's, it's stunning to me. It's stunning to me that instead of trying to save the right from the collectivists, from the fascists, from the religionists, from the statists, the nationalists. You want to join them because of your hatred of the left. That's just stunning, just stunning. It shows how shallow the base for individualism is, how shallow the foundation of those who advocate for individualism are when they can so easily flip, so easily turn their back on individualism, on freedom, on the founding fathers, on the very nature of this country, on the very basis of this country, to join his arm and link up as brothers with statists and nationalists and collectivists. Because the left is worse. It's what has made me so utterly pessimistic over the last five, six years. To see uh, the, 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 the small, but what I thought was committed, individualist movement out there. Just lose it. Lose it and embrace collectivism. Or embrace the collectivists. Lose it and forget what positive values we're actually fighting for instead of dedicating oneself completely to what you're fighting against and teaming up with some of our worst enemies. It's what I've been riling against and trying to convince you against for five years. It's why I have lost so many subscribers. It's why so few people, ultimately, in the big picture, watch these videos. It's because there is no, there's nobody dedicated anymore to individualism, to the positive, to capitalism, to freedom. Again, to the founding fathers. The passions of hatred of the left are so powerful, so strong, so overwhelming that to hell with the founding fathers, to hell with the Constitution, to hell with the Declaration of Independence, to hell with capitalism and freedom and liberty and markets. Let's embrace these guys just so we can fight the devil on the left, so we team up with the devil on the right. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brook Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see The Iran Brook Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. 
I very much appreciate it.